Hello and welcome to another episode of Friendly Friday, a weekly series where we take a look at a budget, standard or modern deck. This week the patrons of the channel voted for 8 Rack in Modern, which is a mono black discard deck built around the card The Rack, which is a pretty old card but it got reprinted in Time Spiral thanks to the time shifted cards, which is why we have access to it in Modern. So the rack is a one mana artifact that when it enters the battlefield we have to choose an opponent and then based on how many cards that opponent has in their hand then the rack is gonna deal a bunch of damage to that opponent. So if the opponent has three or more cards in hand then the rack doesn't deal any damage but if the opponent has fewer than three cards then the rack is gonna start dealing damage. So if they have two cards in hand the rack deals one damage, if they have one card in hand the rack deals two damage and if the opponent is empty handed on their upkeep the rack will deal three damage to that opponent. So this is a nice repeatable way of dealing damage to the opponent and in combination with all our discard effects in the deck of course the opponent is very likely going to be empty handed most of the time which is where the rack will kill the opponent very quickly and the deck is called 8 rack because we basically have 8 the rack effects in our deck because we also have 4 copies of shrieking affliction which is very similar to the rack. Shrieking affliction is a 1 mana black enchantment that says at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep if that player has 1 or fewer cards in hand he or she loses three life which means that it's very similar to the rack the only difference is that the rack will still deal a damage if the opponent has two cards in hand while shrieking affliction needs the opponent to have one or fewer cards in hand but this also means that if the opponent has exactly one card in hand shrieking affliction still makes the opponent lose the full three life while the rack would only deal two damage so they're very close in power level and uh, depending on the situation one will be better than the other so that's why the deck is called eight rack because we have a total of eight of these effects so of course the rest of the deck is mostly removal spells and discard effects, so let's go over those real quick. We've got four copies of Inquisition of Kozilek, Modern's premier discard spell, so single black mana, opponent has to reveal their hand and we get to take a spell with convert mana cost three or less and make them discard that card. So this is a nice discard spell to lead off with on turn one since you'll get to take a look at the opponent's hand and see what they're working with and then try to disrupt their plan as much as possible. We also have four copies of Raven's Crime, which just targets an opponent and makes them discard a card. And of course the opponent gets to choose which card they discard. But this also means that the opponent might discard some lands, which we can't take with cards like Inquisition of Kozilek. So in some situations Raven's Crime is actually better. And it also has a retrace, which means in the late game we can discard a swamp from our hand in order to recast Raven's Crime. So of course this gives us a repeatable way of casting Raven's Crime in the late game instead of flooding out and drawing too many lands, so that's very nice. Then we also have two copies of Funeral Charm, which doubles up as a removal spell and a discard spell at instant speed. So we can make the opponent discard a card, and at instant speed this means that we can actually make them discard after they've drawn their card in their draw step, so we gotta make sure to put a stop on the opponent's draw step and then make them discard. If the card they drew was not an instant, they won't be able to play it in response, so they will have to discard it, which is very nice. And then of course we can also give a creature plus two minus one until end of turn, which means we can kill one toughness creatures with funeral charm as well. The third mode is probably not gonna come up very much, so we can ignore that for now. Then we have some more discard spells, two copies of blackmail, which for single black makes the opponent reveal three cards from their hand and we get to take one of them. So if the opponent of course has three or fewer cards in hand, then blackmail is very powerful since we can even take lands with it. But if they have more than three cards, then of course they can keep their best card in hand. So that's the downside of blackmail. And then we also have a wrench mind, which is very powerful for double black. Target player discards two cards unless he or she discards an artifact card. So against decks not playing any artifacts, this will make the opponent discard two cards for just two mana, which is a very good rate. So a very powerful discard effect at two mana. And we also have a smallpox, which kind of doubles up as a removal spell and a discard spell. So double black, each player loses one life, discards a card, sacrifices a creature, and then sacrifices a land. So also very powerful against decks relying on their lands in order to do things. So just a very nice disruptive spell on turn two against most decks, especially if the opponent already has a creature in place, since then we get to kill a creature get rid of a land and make them discard and of course we don't need a lot of mana to operate so sacrificing a swamp in this deck is not a big deal so that's why we're also running 22 swamps in a deck that tops out at 3 mana because we also have 
3 copies of Necrogen Mists, which is an enchantment that at the beginning of each player's upkeep makes that player discard a card, so another repeatable way of making the opponent discard cards, which in combination with our rank effects is gonna accumulate a lot of damage. And then finally we also have some removal spells in 4 copies of Fatal Push, just the classic 1 mana removal spell in modern nowadays. And then two copies of Victim of Night, which is a bigger removal spell that can deal with larger creatures, as long as they're not vampires, werewolves or zombies. And finally we have one more win condition in the main deck in Pack Rat, which has power and toughness equal to the number of rats we control, and we can pay two and a black to discard a card to make a copy of Pack Rat and put that token into play. So in the late game, when we draw additional discard spells, when the opponent's already empty-handed, or when we draw additional swamps, we can just discard them to Pack Rat, make additional rat tokens, and go to town. Then taking a quick look at our sideboard, we've got two copies of Evil Presence, which enchants a land and turns it into a swamp, so a nice way of disrupting decks like Tron or Scapeshift. We've got one copy of Liliana's Defeat, which destroys a black creature or planeswalker, which is very nice against decks like Grixis Death Shadow. Two copies of Farika's Cure, which deals two damage and gains two life, which is great against burn decks or if we want additional cheap removal spells. Two copies of Flame Tendrils, which gives all creatures minus two, minus two and exiles them, so great against decks going wide with lots of small creatures. Two copies of Nyxethid, which is an additional win condition, three mana creature that's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Have to choose an opponent when it enters the battlefield, and Nyxethid gets minus one, minus one for each card in the chosen player's hand. So of course if the opponent is empty-handed, then this is gonna be a nice three mana 7-7, seven, seven, which is not bad. So this can come in against decks where we might need additional win conditions or against decks that empty their hand very quickly by themselves. And then two copies of Knight of Souls Betrayal, an enchantment giving all creatures minus one, minus one. Also great against decks going wide with lots of small creatures. And then one copy of Bajuka Bog, which when it enters the battlefield tapped, exiles a graveyard. So great against graveyard decks, same with Spell Spellbomb which we can also sacrifice to get rid of a graveyard and pay a black mana to draw a card. So these four come in against all the graveyard decks in modern. So yeah, that's the deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we won the die roll and I'm gonna choose to be on the play here, even though some 8-rack players like to be on the draw even if they win the die roll, but uh, I'm not gonna take any risks here. And this hand looks okay, a bit heavy on the lands, but we do have Fatal Push, Shrieking Affliction, Raven's Crime, and we can, of course, retrace the Raven's Crime, so I think this is a keep. And now we have to decide if we want to lead with the Raven's Crime or the Shrieking Affliction. I kind of like getting the Shrieking Affliction in play in case our opponent is playing discard spells, because then they could get rid of our Shrieking Affliction. So yeah, I'm gonna lead with Shrieking Affliction and say go. Opponent with a Razor Verge Thicket into Noble Hierarch. So now we get to Smallpox the opponent, which is very powerful in the spot, as I just played their mana creature. So Smallpox will get rid of their creature, their land and a card in hand, and we can just discard a Swamp from our hand. So this is exactly where we want to be here. And pass a turn. Opponent with forest go. So now we get to inquisition them. And alright, so now we see what the opponent's up to as they reveal Ledgewalker, Umbra, two lands. So the opponent's on some sort of Bogle's Hexproof deck, which we drew our inquisition right on time here, so we can take the Ledgewalker. So they don't have any creatures to enchant, and now we can also Raven's Crime them. So this Fatal Push is probably not going to do much in this matchup, unless the opponent has a core Spirit Walker, so we can't target them. But a card like Smallpox is very effective against Hexproof creatures, especially if they only have one of them in play. And alright, opponent with a core Spirit Dancer, probably the only creature besides Noble Hierarch in their deck that doesn't have Hexproof. So we do get to Fatal Push here, which is nice before the opponent gets to gain any value by casting an Aura. But no need to Inquisition them here. Opponent will start losing life to our Shrieking Affliction. And we draw another Inquisition, which I guess we can cast now since our opponent has an unknown card in hand. 
and we get to take the Hyena Umbra. Shrieking Affliction does what Shrieking Afflictions do. And let's pop that back. So here, I think we want to retrace our Raven's Crime, targeting the opponents, discarding a Swamp. Opponent discards a land, so I think we still want to Inquisition them just in case they drew a spell and they did have an Ethereal Armor. And we'll say go. Opponent down to 7 here with our Shrieking Affliction. And another smallpox. Uh, I think we can save this one in case our opponent plays a creature. So I don't think we need to play that one quite yet here. Shrieking Affliction puts the opponent to 4. Another Swamp means we can retrace. I meant to retrace our Raven's Crime there, but I guess we can just cast a Smallpox after all, and I don't think our opponent's gonna be able to recover here since... Yep. Alright, so... Let's take a look at our sideboard. Our best card in the matchup by far is gonna be Smallpox here. So... That's a card we really want to see in our opening hand. So Nixethid could be large enough where it can actually block or attack past one of the opponent's creatures if they don't have too many enchantments on them. So I could see bringing in our Nixethid. Knight of Souls Betrayal seems a bit too slow. If the opponent manages to stick a Hexproof creature then this will come too late. Especially when the opponent's on the play now. So I think the only cards we want to consider are Flame Tendrils and Nixithid, and then of course we can consider taking out our Fatal Pushes, which besides the Spirit Dancer don't have many targets. Opponent might also have Ley Lines of Sanctity after sideboard, which will be quite difficult to beat if they can have that in their opening hand. So we might be in trouble if they have that. But I think the Fatal Pushes come out, Flame Tendrils come in, and Nixethid comes in. Let's see, Victim of Night. I guess we can play a Fatal Push instead of Victim of Night. Just because it's just a cheaper removal spell and it's still gonna kill the same creatures. Funeral Charm, also pretty weak, but it can kill a Noble Hierarch or just make them discard, so I think it's fine. And yeah, I think we keep the rest as is and basically hope that the opponent doesn't have a Ley Line of Sanctity and hope that we can draw our smallpox. So yeah, let's go with this. And a hand with double rack Necrogen Mists. So this could win through a Ley Line if they have it, but it is a rather weak hand otherwise that doesn't really disrupt the opponent in any way. So this is definitely an interesting choice. The opponent already mulled to six here. I think I wanna risk it here and hope that the opponent's mulliganing towards the ley line. And then this hand could be quite good. Opponent decides to keep six, no ley line, dried arbor, their first land, so... Can't punish them for that since we don't have a removal spell, but we'll play a rack and say go. We could have tried to mulligan towards a smallpox, but as you see, the opponent leading with dried arbor protects them from smallpox in a way. And Seal of Primordium can destroy one of our enchantments or artifacts, so they could use that on our Necrogen Mists once we play that. Hopefully they use it on a rack instead, as we keep drawing Swamps. Doesn't really have a reason yet to sacrifice these seals since they still have plenty of cards in hand, but they do decide to fire it off anyways, which I think is actually good for us since we would rather have the Necrogen Mists in play than ad an additional copy of the rack. Opponent takes two with Temple Garden. Let's see what they want to play here. All right, there's their first resolved hexproof creature and another seal of Primordium. All right, that's unfortunate. 
since now they do have another answer to the seal. But I guess we can just play out our Nixithid instead here, if we would like to. Since I'm pretty sure that if we run out the mist, our opponent's just gonna destroy it. So might as well play Nixithid instead here. And then the opponent might be tempted to just destroy the rack instead. Alright, and pause the turn. Let's see if the opponent sags their seal here. As they would be taking one damage, and in fact they do. So no racks for us in play, but we do have a 4-4. Four four, and next turn we can follow it up with a Necrogen Mists. No attacks from the opponent, and nice, we get to go Necrogen Mists. Into Shrieking Affliction. I guess we should have probably attacked first with our Nixithid, or we can just keep it on defense, which is also reasonable. Alright, I think we do attack here. And then we can play our Shrieking Affliction. Pause the turn. And Necrogen Mists makes the opponent discard. Keen Sense on their Glade Cover Scout, so they're gonna get to draw a card here, which could have been a reason to hold back our Nixithid, and a double Keen Sense is really gonna punish us here for attacking as the opponent gets to draw two cards, which of course goes against our plan of making the opponent empty their hand. So yeah, we might need to keep our Nixithid on defense now. We have to discard a Swamp to our Mists, and we get to draw another Mists, which is not bad here. And I guess I'll play out the Swamp since we'll have to discard it anyways. Keep our Nixithid on defense this time. Hope that the opponent can't draw too many powerful enchantments. They discard a Hyena, Umbra, and a Leyline of Sanctity, so they did bring in Leylines, of course. They just didn't have any in their opening hand. No attacks from the Glade Cover Scout, that's good news. And a Hyena Umbra on the Dried Arbor. Alright, we draw a Wrench Mind, which we might as well cast. Alright, and our opponent scoops it up, so we managed to win our first match here with a track against Bogles, thanks to our Smallpox in Game 1, and I would say our Nixithid and Necrogen Mists in Game 2. Sweet, let's move on to the next one. Alright, again we'll decide to be on the play. This hand unfortunately will have to mulligan since we don't have any land. And this seems like a keep. So, Rack, I think we want a bottom since we already have two of those effects. We'd rather draw more discard effects. And now we have to decide what do we lead with on turn one. I think we lead with a copy of the rack and then turn two we can go Shrieking Affliction Raven's Crime or perhaps Fatal Push something. So the opponent will know what's up here but that's fine. Island into Aether Vial so we might be up against Merfolk and our Inquisition comes a turn late in that case as we could have taken the Aether Vial but let's Inquisition the opponent right now see what they're working with. Alright so Master of Waves, which we can't take, Mutavolt Island, Harbinger of the Tides, and a Vapor Snag. Don't really care about Vapor Snag since we barely play any creatures. I guess we'll take the Harbinger in that case. Master of Waves might be a problem, as well as the Mutavolt. I guess we do have the Fatal Push to deal with Mutavolt at least. So let's take the Harbinger, and then... Because playing the Shrieking Affliction here wouldn't really do anything. So might as well Raven's Crime. And there goes the Vapor Snag, so we'll pass a turn. There's a Mutavolt. No plays. Alright, Swamp means we can retrace our Raven's Crime and then play the Shrieking Affliction, which I don't mind. So let's do that. Target our opponent. Discard a Swamp. 
opponent discards Master of Waves, interesting. So they might think that they won't get to the Master or they just drew another one. Uh, so at this point I think I'm fine just playing out the Shrieking Affliction rather than keeping up Fatal Push, even though Fatal Push could kill the Mutavolt, I guess. But if we draw a Swamp next turn, then we want to retrace the Raven's Crime and then keep up Fatal Push rather than now. So I think we do just run out the Shrieking Affliction now and then next turn keep up Fatal Push rather than the other way around. Opponent loses one to our rack. Ether Vial up to two. And three mana for a Marrow Regery. Pack Rat to draw. Could keep up Fatal Push for whatever opponent vials in here. Since the last card the opponent has is an unknown card. Or could keep up Fatal Push to take care of the Mutavolt. I guess we do keep up Fatal Push for Mutavolt since playing out Pack Rat here doesn't really do much since it's just a 1-1. One -one. Could get into a spot where we chum block with Pack Rat to Fatal Push the Marrow Regery to enable Revolt. But that's also pretty far-fetched. So I guess we do keep up Fatal Push rather than playing out Pack Rat here. Since I don't think Pack Rat is going to outrace the Merfolk shenanigans. So opponent loses a bunch of life. Let's see if the Aether Vial goes up or not. No, it stays at 2. Opponent plays... nope, activates Mutavolt, which is good. So we'll let them attack. And then cast a Fatal Push on the Mutavolt. That works, we'll only take 2. Untap Inquisition is a good one, so I think we'll play the Inquisition here. Opponent can vial something in, but then they'll just lose more life, which is kind of what we want. And Packrat again isn't going to do much yet. So let's see if they have a response here. They do. They vial in Harbinger, just a 2 2 3 3 thanks to the Lord. And their last card is just an island, unfortunately. All right. Opponent down to nine. Opponent takes up Ether Vial since they want to keep the land in hand. And Lord of Atlantis is an unfortunate draw for us since they'll have another Lord in play. And now they might be able to outrace us. So we'll take 7 down to 11. We draw another copy of the rack, so if we play out the rack, the racks will deal a total of 4 damage plus 3 from Shrieking Affliction. Put the opponent to 2. We know their last card is an island, so would basically have to draw another Lord to kill us, since we're at 11. So playing Packrat actually doesn't do all that much, so I think we just play out the rack and hope that they don't draw another Lord. Although they do have a bunch of those in their deck, of course. So the opponent falls to two. And did they find a Lord? Or do we get to untap and probably win? Alright, we managed to get there. Very close game. And I think the key turn for us there was keeping up the Fatal Push rather than playing out the Pack Rat. To prevent that initial damage from the Mutavolt. Alright, so Merfolk, I do like Flaying Tendrils as an option. So we can bring that in. Um, Farika's Cure is also an option just as an additional removal spell for all the Lords. Uh, Knight of Souls Betrayal seems a bit slow, but is also a consideration. I don't think we want Pack Rat since our creature will get outclassed very quickly. Necrogen Mists might also be a bit too slow if we bring in more 3 drops. So I could see shaving at least one copy. So the question is, do we want the Knight of Souls Betrayals or not? I think they're a bit too slow. And by the time we play them, the opponent's already going to have a bunch of lords in play. So it doesn't seem all that great. 
I could see bringing in Farika's Cure, just as an additional removal spell to take out a Lord. So the question is, would we rather have Farika's Cure or anything that we have in our deck right now? I think we keep this configuration. Two copies of Necrogen Mist still seem okay. So yeah, let's submit this and see how it goes. And yep, this hand looks like a keep. So hopefully the opponents can't discard an Aether Vial to our Wrench Mind here. Opponent Mulligan's down to 5, so we're already in a pretty good position here. Let's see if they have a turn 1 Aether Vial. Nope, just a Curse Catcher. Alright, that's fine. We'll be able to counter a Wrench Mind if we play that on 2. So we'll have to try and play around the Curse Catcher here. So let's see if they have a turn 2 Lord or not. Instead of spreading seas on our swamp. Alright, so that's gonna delay our double black spells for a turn, but I guess we're not under that much pressure, so it's not the end of the world. So we'll pass a turn here. And then we'll just use the spreading seas land to pay for the curse catcher. Of course the opponent's not gonna sacrifice a curse catcher if we have one spare mana, but you know what I'm talking about. All right, there's a Lord of Atlantis. So I think we want to wrench mine the opponent next turn just to still get those two cards and then we can maybe set up a Flame Tendrils for a turn later. Blackmail is also interesting. So yeah, I think we just want to wrench mine here. Victim of Night is also an option. If the opponent plays another Lord next turn, of course the Flaying Tendril is not going to be effective, but then we can just Victim of Night plus potentially Blackmail. So I think we just Ranch Mind here while we still can, hope the opponent doesn't have an Aether Vial in hand. But doesn't appear they had one, otherwise we might have seen it on turn 1. Alright, so opponent discards a Curse Catcher and a Master of the Pearl Trident, and we'll just say go. The rack gonna rack up some damage. So hopefully no Lord here. Instead another Master of the Pearl Trident, so we'll be forced to use Victim of Night on one of the Lords before we can Flame Tendrils. But that does mean we also get to Blackmail here. So let's Blackmail first. Not that it really matters. Bodant has an Island and then we'll just Victim of Night right now, the Master of Pearl Tridents, and say go. And hopefully they don't draw another Lord here, so we can Flame Tendrils them, and that's probably gonna be pretty good. No, another Master. That's not what we wanted to see, since now they have two 3-3s. Three and they're gonna definitely outrace us here, so we need to draw Fatal Push or another Victim of Night to survive. Victim of Night, I guess, is not even good enough. So yeah, Flaying Tendrils can not even kill one of the opponent's creatures. So that's pretty unfortunate. The opponent drew two lords in a row after discarding one. But I guess they do have eight of them in the deck, of course. So yeah, Necrogen Mist's not gonna do much. We can represent having a removal spell, but the opponent's just gonna attack. So... Yep, yeah, we'll move on to the next one. And hope that the opponent doesn't draw as many Lords. So again, taking a look at what we have, opponent decided to keep in their Spreading Seas, which makes sense. I think we keep things as is. The only card I could consider cutting is Necrogen Mists. But I think we just keep it as is and decide to be on the play to get ahead of any Spreading Seas shenanigans. A one lander with double shrieking affliction, smallpox victim of night. So if we draw a second land, this hand of course is pretty great. If we don't draw a second land, this hand could very quickly lose. 
We have 21 lands left in the deck and really need to draw land right away basically. So I don't think we can keep this unfortunately. The risk is just too high. Alright, double smallpox hand I guess we'll keep and put a land to the bottom. Play a swamp, say go. Don't want to see a curse catcher, ether vial is fine. Shrieking Affliction. So I think we'll Shrieking Affliction. Don't want a small box on the opponent, doesn't have any creatures in play yet. There is a Mutavolt, which could also be a problem down the line. Opponent's not gonna play anything, so. I think we just want to play the Shrieking Affliction, play a land, say go. Opponent's going to violin a curse catcher. So next turn we could double smallpox. Another curse catcher is also not what we wanted to see here, since that's a cheap creature the opponent can sacrifice to our smallpox. So we'll take one. Necrogen Miss, an interesting one. So I think we still go with our smallpox here. Rather than the Necrogen Mists. Opponent can double sag the Curse Catcher to counter this, but that would be fine. Opponent files in a response, so this might be Sil Silvergill Adepts. In fact, that's what it is. So they want to draw a card first to decide what to discard, perhaps. Instead, they cast a Negate. And we'll just play out, let's see, we could play Smallpox, but that would just get countered by the Curse Catcher. So probably shouldn't even have played out the land there, since we might have wanted to discard the land. So now we need to draw our Fling Tendrils, basically. Knight of Souls Betrayal would have looked pretty good here, but also would have gotten negated. Mutavolt turns into a 2-2. Another smallpox. All right, let's go for it. Another vial in response. Another silver gill. So the opponent with a pretty strong draw against eight rack here. Double curse catcher, double sil silver gill. Definitely a way to win this matchup. So, I guess we'll discard the necrogen mists here. Play the other smallpox. Get it countered. By the curse catcher, but then uh, can possibly draw into flame tendrils in a turn or two. Let's see if they counter this with the curse catcher. No, another negate. Yep, yeah. all right. So we'll take seven here next turn, which means. They still have their Curse Catcher to counter Flame Tendrils, so that's not an out. So at that point I'm not sure what we can draw here to get us out of this. As they violin a Lord and... Yeah, that might just be game here. Let's see, 6, 9, 11, we go to 1. But... Don't have any outs, I don't think. Victim of Night. I guess it can catch our opponent by surprise, so we'll keep it up, but... Probably not gonna get the job done. Attack with everyone, Victim of Night on the Master. But we still take 5 and we're dead. Alright, unfortunate. Our draw didn't really line up well against what the opponent was doing. So we'll be back for the next one. Alright, on the draw here and this hand looks quite good, so we'll keep. 
got two rack effects, two lands, wrench mine, fatal push, opponent with an utopia sprawl. All right, so we're up against some sort of devotion deck perhaps, or ramp deck. So small pox would be pretty great against this kind of opening. I don't have a one mana discard spell, so I guess we'll just play out one of our rack effects rather than fatal push. So let's lead with the rack, say go. And then next turn we can wrench mind most likely. Unless our opponent has a mana creature, we need to fatal push right away. Three mana for a Selkie. So 2-2 two, two that draws a card. So yeah, the opponent definitely on a devotion deck here. Alright, so let's just wrench mind here, I think. Yeah, don't have any other great options. And then next turn we can go Raven's Crime plus some other stuff, perhaps even retrace the Raven's Crime right away. Put in this card's Crater Hoof and Primal Command. So two of their Wincons basically. And there's a Nykthos, which is gonna make a lot of mana for them. Right now their devotion to green is four. There's an Arbor Elf. Five devotion now. This could be a Primal Command instead, it's a Garruk, which can also untap a land. So yeah, the opponent's off to the races here with a very quick start. Making 8 mana. And there's a Primeval Titan, so the opponent's fully going off here. Gets a Kassig Wolf run and a Stomping Ground. And yeah, that's a pretty good turn 3, I would say. And we're here with our Swamps and our Fatal Push. Opponent didn't even need the Arbor Elf there. So yeah, we're pretty much dead here. Guess we can play out our Shrieking Affliction. Just gonna deal 6 together with the Rack, and then we can Fatal Push the Arbor Elf. And that's about it. So might as well Fatal Push right now. Could keep it for a Beast token from Garruk. Um, both options are pretty bad, but I guess we'll Fatal Push to prevent lots of uh, wolf run mana from happening. Pause the turn. And I guess we'll redirect the damage to Garak here. But with what the opponent has in play, they should already be able to win this game quite comfortably. And yep, opponent making a million mana with Wolfrun. Put that all onto the Primeval Titan. And a 22 powered trampling creature on turn 4. That's pretty great. Let's see what the opponent gets with their Titan. Maybe we can get some more info, just a stomping ground and a forest. Alright, on to game 2 here. So definitely bringing in our Evil Presence, since if we play Evil Presence on a forest being enchanted by Utopia Sprawl, then the Utopia Sprawl will fall off, so that's pretty good. I don't think there's anything else in the sideboard we really want. Packrat seems pretty bad here, as the opponent can just go over the top. So I guess we just get rid of an additional Necrogen Mists, which might be a bit too slow. Try it like this. I do want to be on the play just to prevent those broken starts from happening. Six lands plus a rack is a mulligan. This is a keep. And we can lead with a turn one Inquisition, Evil Presence. I think we'll keep on top. Don't have any rack effects yet, but if we can stop the opponent from doing anything too broken, then we'll draw into our win conditions at some point. So let's lead with Inquisition, try and take something that will disrupt the opponent's start here. They have triple, mana, dork, Primal Command, Primeval Titan. 
guess we'll take the Arbor Elf, which is the most dangerous in the deck, and say go. So we do have an answer to the first mana creature. And there's our evil presence. The opponent doesn't have anything they can really ramp into on turn 2 here, so killing the birds isn't that important. If we ranch mine them, they likely just get rid of a birds and a land. And then next turn we can fatal push the birds to take them off mana. So I think we ranch mine here. See what the opponent wants to discard. Primal Command and Ancient Grudge, which is also pretty nice from them, since that can get rid of a rack, even from the graveyard. And another Birds. So now we can double Fatal push the Birds, which seems pretty good. Could also Blackmail get rid of that Titan, but if they're not casting the Titan, then don't need to worry about those. So yeah, let's just f double Fatal push the Birds. And pass it back. Hoping the opponent goes for a Utopia Sprawl here at some point. Alright, another Ranch Mine is perfect. Opponent with Primal Command and Titan left in their hand. Alright, so now we basically need to try and find our rack effects before the opponent draws more lands into powerful threats, and they did find a fourth land there. So not off to a great start for us. Swamp means we basically don't have anything to do here with our mana. No point playing the evil presence, blackmail doesn't do anything. Question is do we play the swamp or keep it in hand? I think we keep it in hand for now. Since we might want to retrace a raven's crime at some point. Another land for the opponents, so they're up to 5 already, which is not good. Alright, there's a smallpox at least. So, I think at this point we have to decide if we want to get rid of this evil presence or this blackmail. So the opponent's going to have 4 lands, so they have still a lot of 5 mana and 6 mana cards they could draw into, which we could take with the blackmail. So I think we just discard our evil presence. So play the smallpox just to get rid of one of the opponent's lands, which is not great, but at least we're preventing powerful top decks. Cycle land, play a land and say go. Sulky, all right, at least we get to take whatever our opponent draws unless it's a land. Alright, it's not a land. So we do get to take it with a blackmail here. Which might as well play over the wrench mind. Another sulky. Also need to remember the ancient grudge in the graveyard. Classic Wolfren, pretty good for the opponents, as they get to pump up their Selkie here and they have a pretty quick win condition. So kind of got punished for firing off our Smallpox so early. And also got punished for discarding the Evil Presence in a way. Fatal Push with no Revolt is not gonna cut it. And Garak can make a beast here, which we can fatal push at least. Salki gets in for two, and our opponent's probably gonna play around fatal push by using the Wolfron on the Salki rather than the beast, so I wanna be mana efficient here in case we need all our mana next turn, get rid of the beast. 
Mm, there's another smallpox. All right. Discard a ranch mind. Down to one land, so basically hoping to draw a bunch of Shrieking Afflictions in a row, and then also Fatal Pushes to deal with the Garak. Nykthos and a Beast for the opponents. Uh, Swamp, I guess, will play out here. So the opponent can pump their beast a whole bunch here. They can also decide to make a second beast. Or they can just plus their Garak, which also works. And is this a Wolfron activation or a Primeval Titan? It is a Wolfron activation, so we have one turn here to draw either another Smallpox, a... Fatal Push or a removal spell, instead it's the rack, which I guess can redirect damage to Garak, but uh, the opponent still has enough mana to pump their beast with Kassik Wolfron here. Alright, so I don't think this is a particularly great matchup since ramp decks just need to play out their lands and then hope to draw something powerful and if we don't have a clock in play like a Shrieking Affliction or a Rack then uh, they're usually gonna win the game. Alright, I wanna thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this gameplay and as always have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel as well as getting us closer to our goals where with every goal reached we will release an additional weekly series so if you want to see more content Patreon is the place to go.